So in the final section now, I just want to give you a quick snapshot of some of these controversial ideas as they're happening in biology right now. And let's have a look first at an animal example. Beavers are vegetarians. They gnaw through bark to eat the sugary layer underneath. They've been gnawing through forests for 20 million years. Felling trees with your teeth takes great strength, skill, and patience. One technique is to slice halfway through and let the wind do the rest. The beaver's incisors are strengthened with iron, which makes them orange. They grow continuously and even self-sharpen. The pond makes it easier to move around the heavy logs they need to build their dams. Out of the water, it's a struggle. Stones help weigh down the base. The whole family works together, carefully interlocking the timber. They dredge mud from the pond bottom to seal the dam. Each pond traps several inches of sediment every year, so there's plenty of it. The young act as apprentice builders, learning the tricks of the trade. The final results are impressive. In the Rocky Mountains, beaver dams slowly filter billions of tons of water. The ponds build up soil and nutrients and help prevent floods and droughts. So, the important argument here is that the behavior of the animals is of the parent generation is cr changing the environment that the other animals, the, the offspring, will inherit. So, first of all, by change by a specific phenotypic behavior, the environment is being changed. So, the offspring now will inherit a different environment, which changes the evol the evolutionary pressures on the offspring compared to the parents. So, for the offspring. You know, like it's slightly safer. It's easier to build the dams, for example, because they can more, you know, easily transport these large, large uh, branches and logs around, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. At the same time, the young beavers learn from their parents, so this kind of behavior becomes reinforcing as social learning takes place. These behaviors change the environment even further, and therefore the offspring, the the, the third generation will again have inherited a slightly different environment which again changes the evolutionary uh, pressures on that generation. So the, the important thing here is that there's an interdependence between the genetic programs that the beavers inherit, the social learning that is taking place during the lifetime of a beaver and the changes in the environment that then all of, it, all of this is being passed on in a complex way to the next generation. So there are changed selection, pr there are changed selection pressures in the environment, which now feed back in very complex ways and force people to consider other types of inheritance rather than genes, first of all. And second of all, it also means you have to look at the whole um, evolutionary process in a slightly more complex way. There is also the evidence now, you know, like we have talked about genes so much, 
but there are so-called what is called uh, epigenetic changes so even though you have a specific gene that gene in your um, DNA or after transcription in your RNA can be switched on or off through a number of different processes the most famous one is being called methylation so there's a little kind of if you want um, a little plastic tap being put at the beginning or the end of a gene that tells the the RNA do not copy this gene for example so even though your genes are there there is some information attached to the genetic code that now determines whether a gene is expressed or not and this little additional piece of information is passed on across generations so very famously the the study by um, Heymans and, and others focused on on people that grew up or were born during the hunger winter so second world war so food was scarce and some fetuses were exposed to this um, food scarcity so close to starvation so women were pregnant they didn't have enough food and so they changed there there was some kind of change in the um, genetic program that these you know babies inherited at that particular time when they were born so exposure to environmental conditions before they even were born which they now inherited and that affected how they would develop over time so exposure to disease etc etc and importantly this now is being passed on to the next generation even though the genetic code was not changed so regulatory genes can change the expression of genes and then this can have very quick very rapid influence on on phenotypes even though a genetic code may not have changed at all so here are some kind of ideas it's a really fascinating paper that they published in um, the proceedings of the Royal Society where they challenge some of these classic uh, modern synthesis uh, assumptions so the preeminence of natural selection that there's essentially um, the three types of um, the three principles of, of natural selection that we talked about so much already and they instead argued that the extended evolutionary synthesis focuses it focuses on these processes in a more complex reciproc reciprocal causation perspective so the organism shapes and is also shaped by selective and developmental environments so this is the uh, beaver example uh, so through niche construction together with all the natural selection um, ideas we can see directional change and relatively rapid change in evolutionary um, processes that lead to basically an organism environment complementarity and this also means that in the classic um, modern synthesis uh, perspective we only have genes to worry about acquired characteristics so socially learned information is not relevant but on the other hand the extended evolutionary synthesis argues there's an inclusive inheritance so genetic inheritance is important of course but also the uh, the environmental inheritance so the actions of our generation on the environment will change the selection pressures and therefore will have an impact on our next generation and uh, and all the information that is being passed on through social and cultural learning of course also needs to be considered and what this means is we move away from this kind of gene-centered perspective that is so central both for the social biologists and the evolutionary psychologists and we move more towards what is called an organism centered perspective so where the de developmental pathways in a specific environment are important and need to be considered and also how the developmental processes change the environment and that feeds back onto evolutionary mechanisms needs to be looked at so evolution is really 
reconsidered and redefined as a transgenerational change in the distribution of heritable traits of a population. So it it still has the idea or it still takes the idea of um, transgenerational change important but it instead of looking at genetic change it looks at what is happening at the level of the phenotype at the level of the organism so the heritable traits in a population and so by doing by by broadening this notion of um, the extended evo of evolution in the context of the evolutionary uh, extended evolutionary synthesis it encompasses a lot of the ideas from cultural evolution theory and tries to look and um, embed these different types of, of inheritance genetic cultural and also what is happening in our actions in relation to environment how environmental changes also influence back on evolutionary processes. So the important point here is that the story is not finished. The story continues. We talked about how Darwin developed his ideas drawing upon a very rich set of diverse thinkers in economics, in philosophy, in, in, in religious studies essentially, and combined this with his rich observations of um, of species in, in different natural environments as on his journey around the world and the same happened with Wallace you know like bringing all these ideas together and combining it with his observations in the area that is today Singapore Malaysia and um, Indonesia and then we talked about how the modern synthesis kind of linked every everything that Darwin and Wallace had talked about to genes and what we are witnessing probably right now is again a massive rethinking of evolutionary processes which takes into consideration the role of cultural information but also the role of the environment how the environment that we created our ancestors created now influences our behavior and this process is happening within biology primarily within philo philosophy and as you can imagine, it's it's a challenge to take some of these processes that are more easily uh, studied in animals and apply them to human behavior. But at the same time, these very interesting and complex ideas have, I believe, a lot of potential to provide us with new insights in the origin of human behavior that are more complex, even more complex than the social biology or the evolutionary psychology schools would make us believe and also bring in the rich nuances from from cultural evolutionary uh, thinking and provide a more holistic perspective on human behavior but this is a space that we have to watch and as I said the story is not finished the story continues <laughs>